All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, kind of who we are, why we started the podcast, and uh, maybe a little bit what you can expect. But the whole idea of this episode is to get you familiar with myself and Rob over there. Um, <laughs> so you kind of know our background, who we are. Today's going to yeah. be more of a... Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a testimony time, but a time of kind of the thing that you need to know about me and Rob is our relationship and our testimonies are very, very much intertwined uh, a bit yeah. in, in the, how they go. So, um, so to start, uh, many of you know, if, you, if you're listening to this podcast, it's very likely that you know who I am as far as uh, in regards to the Honest Youth Pastor. Uh, because that's probably how you found this podcast in the first place. Uh, if you didn't find it that way, I don't know how you found it, but thank you for finding it. Um, but it's good called, find, good find. Yeah, good find. You need to click that subscribe button even before you. Hear <laughs> um, it doesn't matter how good it is. Just, <laughs> just, just do it, man. Uh, but the Babylon Pastor Podcast, the name came from. Um, actually, it's Acts chapter seventeen verse 18. And this is, I mean, Paul's talking and it says verse 18, uh, that they called him a babbler. And, uh, it's, they said that it seemed like he was talking about foreign divinities when he was telling them about who Jesus was. And this babbler thing was actually an insult to him, uh, because it was like somebody that was just spitting out things that they had heard, but they hadn't fully digested before. And, uh, that's, that really kind of hit a chord with me when I thought, what can we call this? Because one, um, their perception of him was that he was just spitting things out and they were insulting him. But when in reality is he was, I mean, was, as we know, Paul B, like incredibly intelligent guy, uh, he was spreading the gospel and it was just so odd to them um, that they didn't, they, they couldn't really receive it um, because they thought he was so crazy. So this podcast is going to be a combination of all of those things where you may hear us uh, and think we're incredibly crazy, but though yeah, we're obvious, would, you're not uh, wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but we hope to come at it uh, as close as we can uh, to uh, to be biblically accurate in, in the information that we present and that we're going to talk about. So that's the idea. Uh, and since I've done most of the talking so far, how about you intro us a little bit, Rob, on uh, how we know each other? <laughs> Well, I don't know what you're talking about because I've never met you until now. Um, oh, oops, no. Okay. Uh, was it sixth grade? Is that right? Um, yeah, I, I probably. Think, I think the sixth grade, which was um, a while ago, right, at this point. <laughs> no, we met uh, in the sixth grade. I moved to, to uh, the same town that you lived in. Mm -hmm. and uh we spent a lot of time uh riding bikes eating little debbie oatmeal cream pies and um trying to stay away and or torture annabelle oh, your yeah. dog yeah right i got the name right right you did you did yeah also it was I think a long those, time ago i think those debbie uh those little debbie cakes is probably also what killed her was <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it totally, she, yeah, you're not supposed to feed a dog those cookies just for anybody's basic information that would make sense yeah so we uh we met that way we uh i guess we're we were in the same youth group same church same uh you know teenager camp same kids camp same all that stuff Everything. right so all summer long we spent uh our days together at camps of various kinds. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's kind of how we met. So we've, yeah. we've been pals for a long time. You were my best man came all the way to North Dakota for that, which is, that I mean, that's true dedication. That's like a Peter Paul type friendship right there. That's pretty just without all the intelligence and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, I had never been uh, uh, to North Dakota before. And I can tell you, if, if you're listening and you've ever, if you live there or close to there, I, I, told, my, I told my wife, Christina, on the way out there, um, that if we, like, if anybody stopped us, we broke down, we were killed, um, nobody would have known. Like, there, there's nobody, like, if you leave a town, there should be a sign that says, 
you, I hope you brought supplies because there's nothing like <laughs> we drove for two hours in a straight line yeah, yeah, and saw yeah. no one. And I was just like, yep. what is that? I was so used to uh, more rural, close together, 20 minutes yep. apart kind of towns. You go to North Dakota and good luck. Yeah. It's not like that. People drive from here to Bismarck, which is like an hour and a half to go to wall to go to not walmart that was that was a lie we have a walmart <laughs> to go to like you know to go shop like christmas mm -hmm. shopping or whatever if you're not you know like if you're from a different era and you don't do it all on amazon like me then you go to you go to billings montana which is even further away or you go to bismarck hour and a half just to go to a mall that's worth something and so you don't, i you guess don't for you for you, no. For for you, that'd be like what going to Louisville about? Yeah, yeah, uh, close long to Louisville, way. Yeah. yeah, something like that. So, yeah, um, the I remember the first. It was 2012, not 2012. I'm crazy. That's when I came to Dickinson. It it was uh, 2004 when I moved to North Dakota, and I remember I was sitting in the back seat and I had the Atlas back before you know it was on there a was screen a and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had the Atlas in my lap and I was looking at stuff and it was dark and um, we were going to try to make it to Bismarck uh, to spend the night. It was dark, which doesn't mean anything in the winter time here. It gets dark, you All know, the time. I, yeah, it's like, I think sunset today is probably four something. So anyway, so it's dark and we're, we're uh, driving to Bismarck. And I see some lights, right? Like the, there was clearly a town up in front of us. And I looked at the Atlas and then, and then we saw a sign and it was like, no, no, Bismarck is 22 miles away. That's not right. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it, that's what it was. We were 20 miles away from Bismarck and we could clearly see the lights of Bismarck because literally that's how nothing open else it is. there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Else. There's no trees. There's no, yeah. there's nothing. Uh, and the I, wind chill right now is negative three, by the way. Just FYI. See, anytime, anytime I think it's cold, anytime I think it's cold in Indiana, <laughs> um, I go, nope, no, it's not. It's not cold at all. Um, all right. So, um, like I said, we've known each other for a while. So, I think <clears throat> let's go back uh, way, 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 way back to, uh, to youth group. Um, that's probably... So we had a lot of different uh, youth pastors. So I grew up in church. I think I've, I've said this before, uh, but I grew up in church my whole life. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, I came out of the hospital. And I think the way my mother and father tell it, like they took me to church the next week. So yeah, uh, I was born in Sunday school. Yeah, yeah they just <laughs> the pastor because he was bilocational. He you know he 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 was a doctor and a pastor, so he just birthed me there. <laughs> then he used it as a Sunday school lesson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as all good pastors do turn life into, into, into analogies. <laughs> um, but I went to church my whole life. Uh, I think in youth group, uh, like I said, we, we knew each other from, from going to the same youth group, but I don't know as if um, I paid attention a lot <laughs> as far as what was being said. So, um, and I but often there was, get met. Huh? There was, there was pizza. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, there was pizza and there was games. And I think yeah. occasionally we cracked the Bible. Um, sure. I'm sure yeah. we cracked the Bible more than I, I remember, but, um, you know, that's, that's my attention span. So, uh, all that to say, I don't really remember being taught much of anything, uh, other than, I, I know we heard the name Jesus a few times, uh, and that I know at camps, um, I don't know if anybody can relate to this. I've talked, I've talked to a lot of people that can relate to this, but at camps, I think I got saved like every night of the week. So we were there five nights and, uh, every, every night I got saved. Because every night there was an altar call and there was another reason to go up front. So um, that was basically my yeah. camp life. Um, <laughs> every, for like four years, it was, uh, it was me uh, hearing a message and then, uh, you know, going up to the altar because I had done something. I don't know what I had done. I don't remember. But um, yeah. so that was kind of my spiritual journey there a little bit, uh, you know, not really listening and or hearing anything and then being convicted about you know saying a bad word and then going up front during an yeah. altar call um and it probably wasn't until college that uh the lord really got a hold of me through some preaching 
uh, specifically Mark Driscoll, but I'm sure some people don't like that name. But it was his ministry that that yeah. that, that really got a hold of me. And like we've talked about before, it was like just that upfront, in your face, blunt, basic, like, "Hey, you're just a sinner in need of Jesus" kind of preaching that really got a hold of me. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get into this in the other podcast, but mm-hmm. um, it was really just that uh, I hadn't heard such a huge push on God's sovereignty and God's wrath uh, in conjunction with his grace. So we'd grown up in a denomination that um, was not of the leaning of reformed. And so when I heard that, I was just like, wow, that's what is that? Like I had never, Mm -hmm. I never heard that before. Uh, I don't think the word sovereignty, sovereignty had ever been said (laughs) as far as I I know. I don't know this because I never tried it. I didn't know any better at the time, but I feel like if I would have said the word sovereignty, people might have gone, oh my gosh, is he a Calvinist? <laughs> That's, he- it, you think we're joking, but I, I don't know. I think, I think there, might, there might be that. I am not joking Yeah, at That's all. That's just kind of the denomination we grew <laughs> up in. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and I know some of you guys have asked before, and you're probably wondering, well, what denomination was that? Uh, the Wesleyan didn't. Wesleyan Methodist, in case you don't know Wesleyan uh, Methodist, yeah. you will know. So it's that denomination. Um, but anyway, not until college heard that. And really from then on, God just, uh, just attacked me, I guess is how I would put it. it was just, I mean, like, like, I don't know when he actually saved me, to be quite frank with you. Uh, with his reckless my, love? Yeah. Oh, it was just reckless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 starting the whole thing with a whole bunch of comments. Good, go you know? for it. Yeah, sorry, bro. Oh, I love it. Um, this is why. This is why when I said, well, "Who who do I want to? Who do I want to do a podcast with?" <laughs> you came to mind. Um, but anyway, at some point, he got a hold of me and then just started wrecking my life in, in a really good way. Yeah. Um, and, and our lives really touched a little bit during that time too. I don't know if you want to go from your side up to that point, and then we can kind of go from. Yeah, sure. So I, uh, incredibly similar uh, to everything you said through the whole youth group years and all that stuff, right? So like, I remember, um, I remember our youth pastors, and I'm sure, right, that like you said, I'm sure that it was more of a God experience than I remember. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, But it was a long time ago. And I remember having fun more than uh, more than learning and, and knowing God better and more deeply. And so that, that again, I don't, I don't want to paint that as a reflection of the people who served us as much as that's just where my heart was at the time. Um, and my mental capacity was that of a teenager. And so, you know, and, and I was no, uh, you know, going to college at the age of 12 kind of teenager. So it was, it was slow. Right. And so, uh, but I, probably what, what was it, Michael, probably like late, almost graduating kind of age. I just took off from it was right around. Yeah. It was almost senior year probably. Yeah. So I just, I kind of uh, went off the rails and um, I noticed um, really a huge trend. I think that, that I began to see, okay, so there, there was a lot of preaching to me on this subject or that subject rock music was one right <laughs> one of the big ones it was like oh my Devil gosh music. yeah then i had i had people telling me um listen we're not supposed to imitate the world that's what that is um and so anytime there was an electric guitar involved in like worship of any kind it was no longer worship right to them and so I'd been that had been preached to me, and uh, yet those same people would listen to secular country music all the time, right? Country, and country's not devil, and, no, no, absolutely <laughs> not. It's uh, but yeah, th- so there was a lot of that kind of stuff, right? And it, it ended up leading me to say in my heart, This is stupid. If this is what it is, why am I wasting my time when I could be doing fun things? Yeah, right? I mean, essentially, that's what it was, yeah. and and so. I, um, I went off the deep end on purpose. I started, uh, I had my first cigarette, my first, uh, shot of tequila 
and uh, fooled around sexually for the first time on the campgrounds that we would get saved at, at repeatedly. So yeah. it, the, all of this stuff, uh, that's just, man, that's where my heart was. I just chased after everything that I could get a hold of that was not of God. Um, I look back on that and like, I was a Christian going into that, but I was a really misguided Christian. And, and the reason that I say that is because uh, I think that there's a, you know, for, for some people, they, uh, they struggle through that and they might not actually be saved. I think that I was because I like the whole time the spirit was still going, Hey, this isn't right. And you know it, you know, Mm -hmm. I was still being uh, kicked in the face by the Holy spirit on a regular basis. Um, and then one day this guy calls who I hadn't talked to in a while. He was in college and he's like, Hey, so I need an accountability partner for this class that I'm in. And, uh, so (laughs) that was you. Yeah. And, um, so through kind of us getting back together a little bit, and then you actually introduced me to Mark Driscoll, who, again, I realize like you might, might not be, if you're listening to this, you might not be cool with Mark Driscoll and, and that's fine. It is what it is, but he, God used him to yell at me in a way that I needed to be yelled at during that time in my life. And then, um, our Arminian, um, brothers and sisters essentially created a Calvinist before it was over with. So, <laughs> so yeah, I didn't know I was the one that introduced you to Driscoll. I didn't, I don't remember that being the case. Cool. Yeah, you definitely were. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, and like I said, I, I, we won't get into it too much, but I don't care what you say about the dude, like his ministry at that time has brought so many people to yep. Jesus. Um, but like you said, a lot of it had to be like, I think for me and for you in different ways, that type of preaching was needed. Like I, like you said, I mean, you needed to be yelled at in a particular way. I needed to be yelled at in a particular way um, because I was so like, I think I might've been on the other end of it. I was so self-righteous about so many things, um, even though I wasn't really self-righteous. <laughs> like I, there was stuff, I was just really good at hiding it. And sure, um, yeah. so uh, him like coming out and it could have been anybody, honestly. I mean, we've talked about Matt Chandler does a lot of the same sort of thing, but, um, just yelling and saying, Hey, you're a dirt bag. And, and Matt, Mark Driscoll had a way of saying, <laughs> of just being, Hey, talking to men in a way they needed to be talked to and say, Hey, look, you're not a man. You're a little boy. Grow up and stop being stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> I, 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 I even to this day try to apply a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. Um, in my preaching just because, I mean, it was so effective when I needed it to be. And like you talked about before a little bit, like I hadn't heard that before that type of preaching. I hadn't, I it had been so limp wristed in the way it was presented that yeah. I was just like, like you said, I mean, I didn't deliberately go off the deep end, but I definitely discounted it because I was just like, you know, I mean, if this, it was just weak again, not to discount any pastor I had, but that was my perception at the time. Yeah. Um, and to this day, in some regards, depending on who you're talking to, uh, talking about would be also my opinion of it. It was just like, it's not that it was bad. It just wasn't strong. So um, all that to say, we'll get into that. I'm sure another podcast, <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so we get up to college. That's where we're at. Um, I go uh, I'm at college specifically for youth ministry and God just really uses that time to, even in that college that I'm not going to name. And I refuse to name <laughs> uh, just because two reasons. One, um, there are some obviously theological disagreements I have with it, uh, mm-hmm. now, but also because I don't want to give it free good press or bad press. So <laughs> we're not going to talk about it, but the, the point is like, God really used that time, even if there are differences now that I have theologically with them to grow me and to show me just the depths of what theology is and what, you know, um, just, you know, that it's not just okay, well, Jesus died for your sins. And, you know, I mean, the simple gospel is great, but it's, I mean, when you start diving into it and seeing, you know, I had never heard the word eschatology, Christology. I never heard those yep. words before. So like, that was really a good time for me. I never heard, no joke, well, t- uh, a little detour real quick. I never heard the word ice, uh, exegesis before. Never heard it. I'm yeah, sitting it in a van. It just sounds like some kind of 
Jesus that I hadn't heard yeah. of. I'm sitting in yeah. a van one day. We're going to go do this project, this community project. And these other ministry students are sitting beside me talking about ex Jesus. And I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, <laughs> I like, I don't want to ask because they yeah. all clearly know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> and I clearly do not. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, how did I get to this point where I am in college? And this is like second year, probably. This is probably sophomore year. How did I get to this point in my life in, in, in pursuing ministry? And no one mentioned the word exit Jesus. Like how is, I mean, not that it's a have to know, but it's kind of important. So, um, just to ah. give everybody a picture of the type of preaching that I had heard <laughs> up to this point. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, I graduate, I get a job. Actually, I'm a uh, bivocational. I was doing youth ministry and work at the same time. And uh, I think during that time is actually when you, you guys got married and we came out to North Dakota for that wedding. Yep. And then shortly after that, the whole reason that my Instagram account started was because me and a pastor had different uh, ideas on, uh, methodology and how to do church which we'll talk about in a future podcast uh and i started this account and now this podcast and we're going to see what happens so um and as you can tell i think and we'll, we might get into this a little bit deeper and we still have time to talk about it on this one if you want but uh i think you're much more reformed than i am i have reformed leanings i think you uh i mean you got spurgeon in the background so i think you're pretty hard <laughs> you're, pretty, you're, you're going there but um so that's I just kinda, like his beard. I tell you what, I do. I just can't grow like you. you the length that you have there, I'm envious, but I just can't do it. Like I'm just like it starts. <laughs> I just I, I look and I go, no, we're just gonna turn that back a little bit. So you I'm have not, to have the right woman. Like she's got to be okay with it and allow it. Yeah, I'm. I actually, my, Christina's mentioned a few times that she's actually surprised that she's okay with the beard I do have. She never thought she'd be cool with that. So you just gotta grow it and just be like, no, I'm not shaving it. <laughs> So, yeah, I love you, baby, but but no, no. Um, I hope she's not going to watch this or listen to it. I'm sure she will. Um, <laughs> mainly only because you're on here. There's lots of things I I ask her every day. Hey, did you see that new post I put up? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks for supporting me. I appreciate it. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of how I got up from the college part to here. Uh, if you want to kind of fill us in up to the college part to now, because obviously between where you left us and now there's a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, a little bit. So that, that really was just the very, very beginning of the whole journey for me. And um, it's just that the introduction to that whole story for me was really long when it comes to years, but um, man, a ton has happened between then and now. Uh, so I'll try to just highlight a couple of things. So, um, I came to North Dakota. My dad was a pastor at the time and he, um, was looking at moving out West. That's all we knew. Church called him from North Dakota. He came here. Uh, it was Watford city, North Dakota, a little bitty town at the time. Now it has oil. So it's not little. Um, it's all it took. yeah, it really is. So he, he came here and, uh, I came along with the family. I was 18. I was um, not excited about leaving Indiana. And, uh, but I came along with them, kind of fell in love with it a little bit and ended up being a youth pastor for a time in Bismarck, uh, where I learned how incompetent I was to be in ministry at the time. Uh, I was still very much kind of finding who I was theologically. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I guess kind of what that, what that looked like for me. Cause I, you know, I had just started, I knew a lot of stuff about the Bible and, and that kind of thing, but I had just started really developing my own, my own theology, who I was in Christ, all that stuff. And so uh, me being a youth pastor was probably a bad move on uh, my, my part <laughs> and the part of the church that I was a youth pastor at. So I still had a lot of bad habits, just uh, immaturity and, and things like that. Um, God weaned me off of a lot of things that I had been running, using to run from him. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, uh, I just, I spent time in North Dakota. I moved, um, moved to uh, quit youth ministry and moved to Watford city with my parents. And I worked in the oil field for a while. Um, then I, I joined 
let me let me back up real briefly because in Bismarck, while I was a youth pastor, I met my wife now. Um, she was in college there and part of uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, now crew. Mm-hmm. And um, so we met through that. We I helped with crew also a lot back then, and uh, we we uh, got to know each other. And uh, we were friends for probably two years before we ever thought about um, taking that a step further for us. And so I met her, spent time in Bismarck. While I was still friends with her, I moved to Watford City, worked in the oil field. Um, and then I had the opportunity to go on a summer project with crew in Medora, North Dakota. Medora, North Dakota is a Western tourist town kind of a thing. Um, Just a place where people go. There's a musical that they do outdoors there in a big amphitheater. It's right in the middle of the Badlands, right by Theodore Roosevelt National Park. So it's just that tourist place, right? But it's only about a half an hour from where I live now. So um, I got an opportunity to spend the summer there with Campus Crusade. I grew a ton that summer. But something that happened that summer that was really tough was uh, my dad had a nervous breakdown. Um, Long story short, my parents were divorced a few months later. It didn't take long, I don't think. um, But I ran away uh, to get away from things and joined the Marine Corps. That's a great place to run away. Uh, Yeah, yeah, (laughs) except for you run into things you didn't want to run into maybe. But yeah, so I I spent four years in the Marine Corps, took me to California. Um, At this time, Donna and I had uh, been uh, deepening, right, in our kind of relationship, and we took steps uh, toward actually having a relationship uh, instead of uh, just a friendship. We were more than that. And um I got done with training in the Marine Corps and moved to uh, back to where I was stationed in 29 Palms, California. My, I got, took leave, got married. You yep, were there for I that. I was there for that. Yep. And then we, we went from, I remember uh, it was like, we went camping for my bachelor party party yeah, camping, right? yeah. We, we went well, camping other it was people like camped a- i slept in a car because a little known fact about me tents are not a thing that's not that's not doesn't happen well and what was it like 30 30 something degrees right oh, that night so it got cold. cold it was so cold yeah. so i remember we got married and like when we left bismarck it was like 30 something degrees mm-hmm. and when we got to las vegas on the way to where we we're stationed you have to drive through Vegas, which is a terrible experience. Okay. Um, but you have to you have to drive through Vegas. When we got to Las Vegas, it was like 110 or something. Just you know, just, in a yeah. matter of a couple of days, you know, it's crazy. But so that took me about the Marine America. Corps, and then yeah, after that, it was uh, quite a journey um, to get to where things are at now. So it's been 10 years ago. Yeah, almost 10 years ago, December 9th, a couple days ago, I got back from Afghanistan. So that was 10 years ago, a decade. So Ain't that crazy? Do you feel it old? Is. I feel it's old nuts. every single day. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Especially when so, I try to get off the floor. When I'm on yeah, my knees, yeah. I try to get up, I go, I shouldn't feel this way. And then I yeah. think about how long ago things were. You can use the term decade and still reference your adulthood. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel like... Um, like when I see someone who's 50, you know, and they're like, ah, my back is kind of hurting today. I'm going, wait a minute. My back is kind of hurting today. This is going to be terrible when I'm 50. <laughs> I've, I've asked my mom and dad, I was like, how do you guys move? Because I can't move right now. Right. And you are literally 30 years old. How do you live? And my mom just goes, there's a lot of Tylenol involved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm going to have to start like, uh, I don't know if she feels that way and has to take so much Tylenol. I'm just going to get some Vicodin or something when I'm 50 years old. I'm a very happy Pilates. It's a lot of Pilates and um, dieting. We're on uh, paleo. Yeah. Paleo and Pilates. That's how you stay healthy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to die. I'm going to die then. (laughs) Yeah. Because I'm not doing that. (laughs) I guess, I guess I'm not making it to 50. So, So anyway, so that's where we are now. Um, started this podcast for a couple reasons. So if you're listening to this, thank you so much. Um, 
obviously you don't have to. So we appreciate you listening. Um, and the idea is really just to have these conversations. So I've talked so much on, on the Instagram page about going like beyond the memes. And that's kind of what this is. I, obviously there's videos over there, things like that, but, um, that's just me talking and me and Rob here, like we've laid out, like we've known each other for a long time. So this mm-hmm. back and forth conversation, I trust this guy with my life, uh, and theology. So, I mean, you can't take a bullet from me all the way out there, but I bet if you were to decide me, you would. So <laughs> that's a long jump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, the idea being is this is a conversation back and forth, uh, about subjects that like we've talked about a bunch on Instagram and that have come up a bunch. So, uh, this month specifically, so the next following podcast you guys are going to be listening to will all be about, uh, church structure, church models, um, how we do things, why we do things, leadership, all of that stuff we're going to kind of cover and dive into. So, um, if those are interesting to you, that's what we're going to be talking to the entire month of January. So, and every one of those things we are completely, and, uh, we're correct on all of them. <laughs> that's true. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> when you listen, it's not so much, I, I want your feedback. I just need you. To right. Learn. Yeah. Take notes welcome right? to class <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's not true at all uh <laughs> no the idea is to start a discussion that's the idea so yeah. uh what we'll see a lot in this is back and forth between like what we've seen uh, and i feel mm-hmm. like the, the people we've talked to obviously um what we've talked about our conversations are we've known each other so we were in a lot of the same experiences but what i found is many people i've spoken to have dealt with pretty well identical experiences. So uh, if you grow up in church, you've probably share it in somewhat of what we've already talked about today. So uh, anyway, that is us. So if you're interested in hearing um, two um, weird guys, what would you, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, um, if, you, if you're listening to us, ramble on and babble on, uh, yeah. welcome. You're to the right podcast. So, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. So thank you for listening uh, to this episode. The next episodes will obviously be a little bit different than this discussing topics that we're going to talk about. The next one will be on leadership and how that looks in the church. So we will talk to you guys next time about that.